This is Data Specialist Sanders of the Ongoing Data Redundancy Project. Object class is safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-220 is housed in an empty condominium on property recently acquired by Research Sector 9. The subject believes the building to be occupied by other residents and should be allowed to persist in this belief. A false bus stop has been installed near the building's entrance. This measure has proven sufficient in deterring SCP-220 from wandering outside the containment perimeter. SCP-220 exhibits trepidation when venturing beyond the building's lobby, most likely due to mobility challenges. The subject will sometimes remain seated at the bus stop for upwards of one hour before returning indoors. SCP-220's room has been provided with a telephone connected to an automated recording service, Ostensibly, a courtesy of the residents, dietary, medical, and recreational needs are to be ascertained from these recordings and several live video feeds. New requests should be submitted to Dr. Hart for approval or denial. In light of Incident 220P, only D-Class subjects are approved for in-person contact with SCP-220 and should be immediately quarantined after testing, in accordance with Sector 9's Type 2 Contagion Procedure. Description SCP-220 is a multiracial, English-speaking human male, aged 76 as of May 15, 2012. SCP-220 presents behavior symptomatic of dissociative identity disorder, alternately referring to himself and behaving as one of two distinct identities. It is uncertain whether SCP-220 is affected by a psychological disorder or is deliberately playing the role of two persons. In SCP-220's public and private behavior, the identity of Ormond Garibaldi alternates with that of Ollie Redacted, a name which corresponds to the subject's birth certificate. Any individual who interacts with SCP-220 in person will be fully convinced that these identities are two separate persons. Two variations of this phenomenon have been observed. SCP-220 presents as Ollie or Ormond and refers to the other persona as a friend or relative, In this case, even when they have been previously informed of SCP-220's condition, test subjects unhesitatingly accept SCP-220's statements as facts. SCP-220 presents as Ollie or Ormond and switches identities during the course of the conversation. The differences between these two personas are not drastic, but recordings demonstrate that the switch is always accompanied by a marked change in posture, tone of voice, and rhythm of speech and personality. Nevertheless, SCP-220's conversation partner will not perceive a change, but react as if one individual has left the room and a second entered in their place. In rare cases, test subjects will behave as if they are conversing with both Ollie and Ormond at the same time. Despite the anomalous nature of these conversations, test subjects never exhibit fear or distress during or when asked to recall the time spent with SCP-220. The effects of SCP-220 are irreversible, regardless of whether an individual is informed of SCP-220's nature before and or after the in-person test. Within four to six hours of contact with SCP-220, affected individuals will begin to display signs of slight disorientation, forgetting their purpose in entering a room or the subject of a conversation. This disorientation gives way to a permanent state of identity confusion. Affected individuals will begin to perceive every person they come into contact with as two distinct individuals. The afflicted will address a single person either as if they are speaking to two people at once or alternating between two distinct conversations. The majority of affected subjects perceive one of these illusory identities as a close friend or relative, regardless of appearances or whether their conversational partner is a stranger or acquaintance. Incident 220P, excerpt from the notes of Dr. Hart. The secondary effects of contact with SCP-220 were discovered accidentally during psychiatric evaluation of D-7905 by Dr. Palermo. 24 hours had elapsed since D-7905's exposure to SCP-220. The affected individual's confusion and disorientation had increased to the point of several times referring to Dr. Palermo as his father. Thirty minutes into the interview, recordings indicate that Dr. Palermo also began to display signs of confusion and disorientation, alternately addressing the interviewee as D-7905 and his son. The effects of SCP-220 were determined to be highly contagious, spread via in-person contact, including eye contact with no accompanying verbalizations. Five individuals were subsequently quarantined, 
D-class subjects were terminated. Dr. Palermo's condition has deteriorated from identity confusion to a state resembling advanced Alzheimer's disease. The contagiousness of these symptoms has been proven to increase with their severity. Individuals who observe SCP-220 via audio or audiovisual recordings demonstrate no anomalous effects, provided that these recordings do not take the form of a two-way conversation with SCP-220. Addendum 1. On January 26, 2012, SCP-220 sustained serious bruising after a fall. D-9120, under pretense of being one of the building's residents, was instructed to assess the subject's injuries. SCP-220's emotional distress was observed to exacerbate its anomalous effect on D-9120, who became rapidly disoriented, forgetting her objective. D-9002 was instructed to retrieve D-9120 from the containment site and was indisposed by these symptoms at a notably slower rate. D-9120 and D-9002 were subsequently quarantined and remotely euthanized. Addendum 2. The following is the complete list of requests made by SCP-220 via phone. Granted requests and meals are supplied while SCP-220 is occupied with the daily ritual of walking five times around the building's lobby. Denied requests were communicated by a note of apology from the condominium's manager, citing the item's unavailability. Requests made by SCP-220 while identifying as Ormond. Arthur Conan Doyle's The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Granted. A pair of silk house slippers. Granted. A French coffee press grinder and coffee beans. Denied. Safety concerns. An electric kettle. Granted. A request that management post his open invitation to a chess tournament for other guests to see. Denied. Denial phrased as best postponed until the busy season. Requests made by SAP-220 while identifying as Ollie. A picture of his wife. Originally denied, as records indicate that Ollie was never married. Granted, with permission of Dr. Hart, assistant researcher Evans has supplied a photograph of her deceased grandmother. Tylenol PM. Granted. Dosage limited to two tablets. An address book. Granted. SCP-220 has been observed to write in this book frequently. A request for a call to be put through to his granddaughter. Denied. SCP-220 has no record of family. Denial phrased as number unavailable. A bicycle. Denied. A guide to bird watching in Florida. Granted. A pair of binoculars. Granted. A chess set. Granted. SCP-220 has been recorded spending upward of four hours engaged with the chessboard, crossing back and forth to play each side.